So the 2019 guidelines for dyslipidemia about lipid modification to reduce risk of cardiovascular disease began with a comprehensive review of the available literature to understand the role of LDL cholesterol. I don't think there's any doubt now among cardiologists or scientists that LDL cholesterol is a cause of cardiovascular disease and lower cholesterol is better and uh, it's important that we reduce LDL cholesterol as much as possible in those at the very highest risk. So the focus of the dyslipidemia guidelines was to try to ensure that uh, we're able to do that efficiently. So the first thing we did was to refine our definitions of risk. So very high risk uh, was somewhat refined, uh, high risk also somewhat refined. So very high risk now is greater than 10% risk over 10 years. Uh, but high risk is five to 10%. That means that we've got a better idea of who is most at risk in society. And then the next thing we did, which was very important, is we changed the treatment goals for LDL cholesterol. So now, very high risk patients, the aim is to achieve at least a 50% reduction in LDL cholesterol, and to ensure that LDL cholesterol is below 1.4 millimoles uh, of, uh, uh, or uh, 55 milligrams per deciliter. And that is a change, that's a more aggressive goal than we've had before. In high-risk patients, we want to achieve a goal of 1.8 millimoles or 70 milligrams per deciliter. And that is also a reduction on what we had before, again, along with a 50% reduction in LDL cholesterol. So these are really quite stringent goals now that we want to achieve. Uh, the way in which we do that is progressive. We want people to be using High dose statin therapy is a starting point. And then if the goals are not achieved, we want people to add ezetimibe. And if the goals are still not achieved, we're recommending use of PCSK9 inhibitors. So we recognize that PCSK9 inhibitors are expensive drugs, but we believe the evidence is very clear that lower LDL cholesterol is a way of protecting people against atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease and we believe that in appropriately high-risk patients, very high-risk patients, it is right that we recommend these drugs that can lower LDL cholesterol very effectively are used in those circumstances. So very exciting. We have these new guidelines and we're hoping that they'll be widely accepted.